G'day Art Snackers, my name is James of James Luke Burke Creative and welcome back to another Art Snacks Box Freestyle where we take the supplies from the spring 2024 Art Snacks Box, experiment with them to within an inch of their lives and then create a masterpiece for the hashtag Art Snacks Challenge. This fun fact, since I haven't seen you for so long, is extra special. We have added a new member to our family. It is a new nephew, my twin brother, and his wife added the third boy to their family, little Lincoln, and he is happy and healthy, and that is just the best news. So there's my fun fact for this episode. Let's get into the box and see what we can come up with. Here is the Art Snack Spring 2024 box. Here is everything inside. Let's take a closer look at what we'll be playing with today. First up in the box, we have the golden so flat matte acrylics. There are four jars with light phthalo green, Naples yellow deep, cerulean blue hue, and naphthol pink, as well as a Clairefontaine paint on white mixed media paper pad in size seven by 10 inches, a set of three Sakura Jelly Roll retractable gel pens, and a Unicuda Advanced Mechanical Pencil size 0.5 millimeters. We also have an Art Snacks washi tape, a Princeton Velvet Touch Series 3950 synthetic brush flat shader size 4, and as always, a snack and a sticker. Let's get everything set up to play. Alrighty, while we experiment, I'm going to give you a bit of information about the products that we have in this gorgeous box this spring 2024. First up, I'll talk about the Golden So Flat Matte Acrylics. They're 100% acrylic paint with a smooth, viscous, fluid consistency and superior coverage. So Flat allows artists to create uniform fields of rich matte color in fewer layers than other golden lines. With this paint, you'll experience smooth, saturated color that dries to an even, glare-free surface. So flat artwork is easier to photograph and looks fantastic online. Glare free might not sound like a big selling point for a lot of people, but if you're someone that works at night with artificial light, you're probably aware of this actually being a bit of a problem, specifically with uh, graphite pencils. I do remember, I think it was a Derwent product in an Art Snacks box months ago uh, that was a matte graphite pencils. Those have been a game changer for me when I want to draw at night because glare does kind of get in the way. So it seems like a really uh, random thing to put on there, but if you've worked with artificial light or you've you know sat at the wrong angle at your desk, a piece can look completely different when the glare is affecting how you read uh, that image. So this is great. And they did dry down very matte, which is also great for mixed media work because matte products tend to uh, you know, play well with others, but the colors themselves were just a beautiful selection. So big shout out to Art Snacks for that. They felt very retro, made a very interesting rainbow, uh, you know, assortment of secondary colors. And I really, really loved this color palette. Even the, I, I mean, I would have just been happy with the kind of primary set, but adding that light phthalo green in as well was just such a great wild card and really kind of, uh, I really just enjoyed that palette. So <laughs> that's a very subjective thing, but uh, all the claims were bold and true. They all uh, stood up for me. So very impressed with these golden so flat matte acrylics. The Clairefontaine Paint on White Mixed Media Paper Pad. From wet to dry media, Clairefontaine uh, Paper Pad can handle anything. It's filled with 20 sheets of bright white heavyweight 250 GSM paper that resists buckling and warping. Whether you're applying ink, watercolor, acrylic, or pastels, the colors will stay vibrant and not bleed through. Also, believe that to be very true. That was my experience. I will say, whenever you notice buckling or warping, for me, it's usually just, you know, there's a certain amount of water paper can take, and then there's just dunking it into a bucket of water, and that's my vibe. So <laughs> I really do kind of push it to its limits, but also heat. As much as, you know, water can start to buckle your paper, heat can also really warp it. And I do use a heat tool. So do not let that uh, those claims seem untrue. That is 100%, I wouldn't even say user error. I know it happens, but I'm more than willing to do it uh, to be able to get that paint to dry. Typically, I would let the paint dry naturally if I could, uh, but sometimes I get very impatient or when I'm filming, I just can't really wait for too long. So I do use that heat tool. I try to keep some of that footage in there just so you can see how that heat affects the paper and how it starts to warp. But uh, for the most part, yeah, very true about the Clairefontaine mixed media paper pad. Those are my feelings. It is a great little paper pad. Seven by 10 is also a really interesting size that I don't typically work with, uh, but I do enjoy that. The Sakura Jelly Roll Retractable Gel Pens. 
uh, everyone, it's a new product. Everyone's favorite gel pen just got an upgrade. Sakura Jelly Roll retractable gel pens feature a new convenient retractable design. No need to remove the cap anymore, just click once to reveal the pen nib. The gel ink glides on smoothly and won't feather or bleed through most paper. It's also archival, so your artwork will last for years to come. The ink dries very quickly, reducing the risk of smearing. So I actually tried to take the lid off. It's actually a part of the pen, so don't worry about that. Don't do that. <laughs> I thought the lid, I mean, maybe they do come off and maybe I didn't pull it hard enough. Don't though, because I don't think they are. Um, it is retractable, so that's the point. And I do have Sakura Jelly Roll pens. They have always been a part of my art supply toolkit. I love a gel pen. I think gel pens are some of the most underrated art supplies when it comes to mixed media. I think we always think of, you know, watercolors and maybe some acrylics and gouache, some, you know, perhaps some markers, uh, pencils, of course. But when it comes to mixed media, I just feel like they're just, you know, the silent little uh, extra little bonus. If you can get your gel pens in there, I think they're just wonderful. And the white was actually really impressive as well. I'm always very skeptical about a white gel pen and uh, have used other uh, Sucrota Jelly Rolls in the past that were white and I found that the tip uh, was a little too thin to let the ink flow smoothly so the 0.8 millimeter is bold enough to be able to let that white ink flow through. White ink tends to be very very viscous because it has to pack so much of that white pigment in there and it just doesn't typically flow that well through ballpoint pens so this was uh, a nice surprise I did enjoy that one. The Unikura Toga Mechanical Pencil. This is a staff favorite at Art Snacks. Achieve a fine, consistent line every time with the Unikura Toga Advanced Mechanical Pencil. It features an ingenious lead rotation mechanism that continually rotates the pencil lead as you write. This allows the lead to wear down uniformly, creating a perfect conical tip. The lead is also protected by a sliding sleeve that can be fully retracted when the pencil is not in use. It is a very, oh, hang on, let me stop a second. That's the piece I'm gonna be doing today. <laughs> I am actually doing an older piece. I'm going to recreate it with all of the supplies in the box and uh, It felt very springtime I just I came across this the other day when I was just flipping through an old planner and I felt like I would love to redraw that So I decided to do it for you today an art snacks challenge. Uh, yeah, but back to the pencil uh, Very interesting problem to innovate I just has never really crossed my mind before that people might want to fix that salute uh, fix that problem I was trying to watch it happen like the little mechanism. It just it really felt fascinates me. Couldn't figure it out, uh, but anyway, that is the pencil. I, uh, it's, it's very interesting. If you've always had that issue, this is the mechanical pencil for you. Art Snacks Washi Tape is also an Art Snacks exclusive. The washi tape makes it simple to create crisp borders around your artwork, especially watercolor pieces. It is easily removable and will not damage your surface. Obviously, I've used it to create a border that is a little bit more narrow than the seven by 10 inches. I really like to have a very thick white border around my pieces. I just think it frames it really nicely. Um, but also washi tape is just great for sticking things in, uh, into like other journals and stuff. And that is something to kind of note about washi tape is that it is not like a permanent stick. It is, it's not supposed to fall off either. It's just a low tack adhesive kind of, you know, decorative tape. And uh, you can get a whole bunch of different types of washi tapes and they'll all kind of stick differently. But I prefer ones that are about a medium adhesive and you can kind of rework them a little bit here and there. Sometimes uh, it just feels better not to stick something down super permanently. If I maybe want to pull it back out again and reuse it at some point, a little piece of ephemera that I might want to use at a later date. I have tons of washi tapes. I'm actually a bit of a weird like washi tape connoisseur and collect a lot of them. <laughs> it is just such a weird thing. It's decorative tape at the end of the day, but I just can't seem to get enough of it. Anyway, love washi tape. The Princeton Velvet Touch series brush. The paint in the lap of luxury with the Princeton Velvet Touch Brush Series 3950 brush. Its silky soft finish wood handle complements the excellent performance of its synthetic fibers. Seven years of research and development went into creating these filaments meant to outperform natural hair. This brush is the ultimate mixed media tool and can be used with various mediums. It's a cute little brush. I don't really use flat shader brushes, especially teeny tiny ones like this, uh, very often. I'm more of a round brush person kind of myself, but this was a lovely uh, thing to use for this because I'll, I'll get talking about the piece now. I wanted to come at this very naively. I wanted it to be a very kind of, you know, I, I, don't, I don't want to say childlike because 
sometimes we think childlike means that there's really not a lot going on, but I mean childlike in the approach. I didn't want to overthink the technique of painting or, you know, the layers. I didn't want to have to think about how I was going to layer properly. And I wanted the approach to kind of look a little naive, even though there was going to be a lot of thought placed behind it. And this is kind of one of those things I like about, you know, being an adult that creates work that is kind of childlike sometimes is that, you know, I always, I mean, I look at children's artwork and I'm just always in love with how expressive it is or how carefree and confident it is created. And sometimes, you know, we try to recreate that as an adult and we just can't seem to let go of the fact that we have knowledge that makes us understand better why something isn't working. Or we have a visual recall in our brain that makes us look at something and say, that's just off. It just looks off because something in my subconscious is realizing that it's just off. So, you know, when I think about creating this kind of childlike work or, you know, creating work that was, you know, childlike in its approach, I do use some of that understanding that I have as an adult artist and apply it still, but I kind of, you know, manipulate the process to make sure that I am not applying too much thought and care where it doesn't matter. And for me, the brush has always been one of the things that I feel like is the easiest to change and get that more primitive result. Because when you're using a brush that you can't control very well, you tend to not try. Or you are constantly reminded of the fact that, you know, I can't get a really thin detail that is going to work. And so I'm just going to have to paint it the way it is. And so I always recommend that if you are kind of struggling to loosen up in this way to use a you know a square like flat shader brush or a brush that is just not something that you can achieve any kind of great detail with this is still thin enough that i could achieve some straight lines but it was very hard for me to get into all the little nooks and crannies that i drew out with my pencil and so almost off the bat i realized i'm just gonna have to keep painting and see whatever happens the use of acrylics that are kind of opaque like these ones are is also a great a great way to go about it because you can keep layering some people when they start to realize it's all going a little bit south uh, tend to back off a little bit and then start to try and fix it all as you go but if you've got these acrylics you don't have to fix it as you go you can do pass after pass after pass and kind of layer over the top and completely erase whatever is underneath like you will never see it again and i also think it is worth noting that i didn't start necessarily with the background and work all the way to the front even though these are opaque paints and i could have done that that is also something that is i think a little too thought through like the, the that is a little too thoughtful for this piece to look as naive as I wanted it to I really wanted it to have a bit of a childlike uh, quality and so I didn't work from the back all the way to the front so that I could get nice even layers and crisp edges where I need them. Sometimes I was trying to put the background in after I'd already done something in the foreground. And what happens then is you end up accidentally kind of painting over bits and pieces. And so the layers look kind of out of order, which again, gives it that slightly naive look. You know, the edges aren't quite clean. You can see that some of the cat disappears into the ground and then some of the background leaks over the top of, you know, that self depiction that I have there. That it, You just can't quite tell how the layers are all arranged. So that is also another tip. I don't know why people would want tips to be able to paint more childlike, but sometimes I think that if you can really let go of your expectations to do a really good, clean, neat, finished uh, piece of art, the whole thing feels a little different. That whole process seems to feel a lot more exciting and a lot more intuitive. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a careful blend. I'm obviously thinking about, you know, some things that a child maybe wouldn't think about. I'm thinking about composition. You'll notice that even though the piece is, you know, very simple looking drawings, there's something in every part of it. Like it's composed quite evenly and balanced because I don't want it to look too unbalanced that, that way. It, it's one of those things that it actually does look a little bit off. And so I'll worry about the composition, but I won't worry about super clean, fine details. I did, however, end up doing that with the pen. <laughs> 
<laughs> but even that, I've got a little trick for. So with the pens, I will, I could be completely honest. We're all about honesty over here at Art Snacks. This was the challenging part, actually having to use the pens because I was completely happy with how it looked without them, but it's not an Art Snacks challenge if you don't use everything. So I did put the pens in and you know, when you use a medium that you can do fine details with, it's really hard not to do that. So instead of going in there and trying to clean up every line, I would intentionally miss the edges of the outline. And that also kind of helps with that, you know, slightly more childlike effect. You're not actually making a perfect straight line. It's kind of wobbly. It's not hitting the perimeter of your drawing properly it's kind of going over the edge and then inside the edge so it's it's all kind of wonky and then also I, you will notice I didn't I didn't draw any lines twice I didn't double sketch anything everything I call it a one line attempt so if I'm going to draw the jaw underneath you know on, on the face if I'm going to go from the bottom of the ear to the other bottom of the ear I have to do that in one stroke well I'll try to anyway I can't go back and try and clean it up or do it in a you know a couple of different passes because even that will start to look a little bit more labored than if I can just do it in one attempt and you will see it becomes a little bit more wonky that way you don't have as much control when you're just trying to do it freehand and go you know go with the flow just one line attempt so those are all my tips if you're looking to create something that you know obviously a lot of us watching are adults and we have uh, a lot of you know information running through our brains about art and how we can create it and what we like but if you are looking to do something a little bit more primitive or a little bit more naive I should say a little bit more childlike in its approach those are some of the things I think about to kind of get myself out of my own head and create something like this that I love I'll see you in an outro in a second there we go, that is the final piece for the Art Snacks 2024 Spring Box. I hope you enjoyed seeing all of that come together. If you would like to join Art Snacks, you can save yourself 10% at checkout with the code JAMES10. And don't forget to share your work with us using the hashtag Art Snacks Challenge in the Mix community and on social media. We love to see what you get up to every season. I'll see you again in summer. Until then, bye.